another segment in our Behind the Veil series. I hope everyone is well. This Behind the Veil series today, we're going to talk about Our Lady of Perpetual Help, our beautiful and stunning mosaic that we have here in Mary's Chapel at Our Lady Mercy Church. A little history is in order. Back in the 1970s, when Our Lady of Mercy Church was under construction, Monsignor Andrew Fry commissioned Italian artisans to create for him a mosaic of Our Lady of Perpetual Help. These Italian artisans are the same artisans who created our Stations of the Cross. The artisans took thousands of small pieces of gold and colored glass and placed them in an intricate design on wooden backboard. Those backboards were shipped to Our Lady of Mercy and installed in the walls where they remain today. They are stunning and they are a one-of-a-kind set of mosaics. Monsignor Fry uh, had the foresight to realize that Our Lady of Perpetual Health Novena would become very, very important for Our Lady of Mercy Church and a great way to recognize the gifts and intercessions and miracles attributed to Our Lady. Our Lady of Perpetual Health Novena, and many people refer to it as a nine-day novena. The word novena actually means nine days. So Our Lady of Perpetual Health Novena is prayed every Tuesday at Our Lady of Mercy Church in the evenings throughout the year, with the exception of the Lenten season, when we pray the Novena of Divine Mercy. You may also recall that in this same area here is where our Advent wreath is displayed around Our Lady. Makes it for a very stunning presentation. So let's talk about this particular mosaic and how it came about. Sometime between the late 1300s and the middle 1400s, we understand that an artisan, unknown to anyone, painted this image onto wood. Now this, this image on wood made a very circuitous journey uh, around the world in that area of Italy and Spain and those countries over there and later ended up in Rome in St. Matthew's Church. In the 1800s, Pope Pius IX, who remembers venerating this image when he was a boy, decided that he wanted to have the Redemptor's Order take custody of the image and place it in St. Alphonsus Church there in Rome, where the image remains. Pope Pius IX also, uh, through the assistance of the Vatican, created a feast day entitled Our Lady of Perpetual Health, in which the Novena evolved. In addition to that, the image occasionally travels around the world so that it can be venerated. It was here in Baton Rouge a couple of years ago at our at Sacred Heart of Jesus Church right here in Baton Rouge. I'm truly sorry that I was unable to see it, though I have spoken to people that have. It was most impressive. So let's talk a little bit about our particular mosaic here in our church. It is rather stunning. So when we first look at the mosaic, the first thing obviously that we notice is that the Blessed Lady has the central figure, is the central figure in our mosaic. And then she's holding the child Jesus, or the child adult Jesus, that we'll discuss. So let's focus on Mary for a second here. The original image painted on wood did not display a crown on Mary or on Jesus. The crowns were added later. The crowns were authorized by the Vatican in the 1800s. The primary reason for the crown on Mary is because of the intercessions of Mary and the subsequent miracles. So the Vatican authorized a crown to be placed on any replicas of the Our Lady of Perpetual Health image. 
So ours bears a crown. You'll also notice that Mary has kind of a solemn look on her face as she looks downward. This supposedly representing her feelings, understanding that her son will one day face the cross. Mary is wearing two primary colored vestments. One outer garment and veil is blue in color. The blue represents the color of garments worn by mothers at the time of Jesus. On the other hand, Mary's also seen with an undergarment, red in color, quite unusual. The red undergarment color is a color worn by young virgins at the time of Jesus. Mary being the only person that could prominently wear both of these colors. You will also notice that Mary is lovingly holding the hands of Jesus and cuddling him in, a, in an extremely warm and motherly fashion. Jesus, according to the artist, has run to Mary's arms and jumped up into her loving arms where he remains. Notice that he is holding on to her thumb as a young child might do with his mother. The other thing of great interest here is our artist depicted Jesus running so fast that he lost his sandal. So if you look closely, you'll see that the brown left sandal of our Lord has fallen from his foot. Jesus is also looking up over his shoulder in this direction, towards this angel. We're gonna to get to that in just a second. So let's look at the surrounding picture here around Mary and the child Jesus. The gold pieces all around are generally referred to as symptomatic of heaven. You'll notice some Greek lettering at the top. The Greek lettering at the very top uh, signifies mother of God. The Greek lettering above each of the angels signifies the name of the angel. On this side of Mary is the angel Michael. Michael is holding the spear and the shaft with the gall sponge. On the other side, the Greek letters represent the angel Gabriel. Gabriel is holding the cross and the nails. You'll also notice some Greek letters under that angel. Those Greek letters refer to Jesus Christ. The angel Gabriel here is the angel in which Jesus is gazing upon. Most scholars believe that the artist's intention was to show that Jesus was thinking about his suffering and death on the cross. Therefore, he was looking in that direction. These angels are carrying these implements in a rather trophy type of stance. In other words, they're holding them up in a fashion in which Jesus has overcome these issues. So, more like trophies. Jesus here is depicted in Mary's arms as being a child, but with the face of an adult. Some scholars will say that that, is, that depiction represents both Jesus' human and divine nature. I personally feel that this depiction represents the fact that as a child in Mary's loving arms, Jesus is remembering and knowing that he has the cross awaiting for him as an adult. This is a, a positively fabulous mosaic. Unfortunately, when we don't know all of these things about the mosaic, we just look at it and we see that there is Mary there and the child Jesus, but there are many, many other things as I have just articulated here in this mosaic that are very important. The last thing I want to mention is there's a star up at the top on Mary's veil 
which tends to indicate that Mary is the star in heaven. She bears the star. She is our intercessor. She comes to Jesus on our behalf, and many miracles have been attributed to her. So the last thing I'd like to mention here in regards to Our Lady of Perpetual Health is, is that we should consider praying to her. In the vestibule of our church, we have many novena cards for the novena of Our Lady of Perpetual Health that we pass out on Tuesdays during the times when we're saying this novena. We should ask Mary for her intercession here to help us in these times of need. I'm very glad that I was able to present this information to you. We are honored to have all of these beautiful things in our church that have been left behind by people that preceded us. I hope that each of you has a safe day today and later on into the week. Thank you very much.